these have been pretty crazy times and they continue to be pretty crazy times. Astrology looks at what's going on up there and compares it to what's going on down here. And as we look at this, unfortunately, it hasn't been <laughs> a very easy period. Um, so, what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes talking about the astrology itself of these times, but then I really want to get to the core issues. Um, it's one thing uh, looking at the astrology and seeing what's going on. It's another thing actually working with the energy, and I think that's really where, where, it, gets, um, uh, where it gets interesting. So, talking about what's going on, um, there's a couple of things I want to mention. Uh, we could talk, I could talk for hours, don't, don't worry, I won't, about the astrology um, of what's happening. Um, I've been talking for years, as many other astrologers have also, about this incredible alignment of Uranus and Pluto. Uranus is the planet of shock, surprise, revolution. Uranus is like lightning. It's like lightning that strikes and relieves the pressure or the tension or wherever it's built up. <clears throat> Pluto is the planet of gradual and slow evolutionary transformation. Pluto has to do with a deeper urge that comes up from the lowest chakra, and all the way up, it's about survival, it's about um, transformation, it's about evolution. Um, Pluto is the metamorphosis, like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. In 1965 and 1966, Uranus and Pluto lined up, like the, like the moon lines up with the sun once every month. Uranus, an 84-year cycle, lined up with Pluto and Pluto is a 250-year cycle, so this lineup only happens every um, century and a half or so. The interesting thing is, is that the lineup was exact in 1965 and 66, and yet the real stuff of the 60s, although there was even that early mid-60 period of time, it really continued through 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. All right, now let's bring it up to the current times. Because in 2012 through 2015, we had the first hard aspect between the same two planets that created what we call the 60s. And so in 2012, <clears throat> we had Uranus, the planet of shock, awe, surprise, revolution, squaring, this is a dynamic aspect, to Pluto, the planet of deep evolutionary um, change. Uranus in Aries and Pluto in Capricorn. This aspect of the Uranus-Pluto square is already over. It was exact in 2012 to 2015. But from the standpoint of the larger changes, we are in the same place now in 2016-2017 that we were in 1967-68. It's after the exact aspect, but it's rumbling through the system. We individuals have an exact aspect. We respond to it in the moment. But culture, history, society takes a while for the energy to ripple through. And so we're getting the results of the seeds that were planted during the exact squares of Uranus and Pluto, um, including Arab Spring, including the Occupy Wall Street including people's revolutions, everywhere, global warming issues, um, uh, gender equality, um, um, medical and recreational marijuana usage. Um, all these things that were active in the 60s are back now. But that's only part of it. The other piece of this is that we had on June 17th, that's just a month ago, the second of three squares. Again, squares are dynamic and they're, they're immediate. And we had the second of three squares between Saturn and Neptune. Saturn is the planet of boundaries. Saturn is the lawmaker. Saturn is karma. What you get is what you deserve. Saturn is the limit. 
It's the rules. It's the speed limit, 65 miles an hour. That's Saturn. The, uh, the speed of light. That's Saturn. You can't go any faster. Well, maybe you can, but that's another discussion. Okay, so Saturn squared Neptune, and still is. Let me get the dates down. The first one was last fall around Thanksgiving, the end of November. The second square, because of the retrogrades, um, was June 17th, just um, uh, nearly, or just a month ago. And then the third and final square will be September 10th. That's this year, 2016. Saturn is containment. It's, it's, it's the boundary. It's what holds us in. Neptune is the escape from the boundary. Neptune is, is um, dissolution of the boundaries. Neptune is imagination. Um, you know, uh, we can only go so far, but in our dreams, we can go anywhere. Neptune is spirituality. Neptune is confusion, because fusion is when two things melt together, and the ego doesn't like that, because it needs to know where I end and where you begin. And so Neptune breaks down and dissolves the hard edges of Saturn. And this is the thing that's tickling the larger issue. This is not a tickle. It's our boundaries, our borders, um, our, our rules are, are leaking. Um, we can't contain them. Nationalism, building a wall between the United States and Mexico. This is a Saturnian fear response to the fact that the old structures, Saturn, are dissipating. They're fading. And there's nothing that we can do to hold them together. Sure, we can build stronger walls, um, but that just isolates. So I don't want to get personally political here, although it may slip through here and there. But the fact is that we have politicians running around like crazy trying to figure out how to fight against the confusion of Neptune dissolving the boundaries, rules, and structures, the safe structures of Saturn. Brexit, Britain's exit from the European Union, was an exact result of this same fear that we need to protect ourselves from them. Now, into this mix, we bring Mars. And as many of you who follow astrology know, that Saturn had moved through um, Scorpio over the last couple of years, and it's now into Sagittarius. Meanwhile, Mars entered, um, Mars entered Scorpio on January 3rd of this year, just six months ago, and then, it turned, and then it moved into Sagittarius at the beginning of March. It then went retrograde back into Scorpio the end of May, turned direct the end of June, and... And it's back in Scorpio until the beginning of August. What does all this mean? Mars is not moving very fast now, even though it's turned direct. In Scorpio, where in traditional astrology, Mars and Pluto both were connected or ruled Scorpio, or traditionally Mars did, um, and now Pluto's added to the mix. So what's happened is Mars has an incredible amount of intensity. As it turned direct a few couple weeks ago, it hasn't moved much, and when a planet moves slowly, it gains power. Mars is the god of war. It's anger. It's assertion. Mars it needs to fight and to defend the boundaries. And so Mars, back in Scorpio, holding its position, has been in a very peculiar relationship with Uranus. Remember Uranus and Pluto? Uranus, the explosion, the lightning planet. Mars has been forming a quincunx, a quincunx, with Uranus. Quincunxes are an aspect of adjustment, irritation. They can't work it out. It's, a, um, it's an awkward alignment at best. Um, and what happens is that when Mars forms this quincunx with Uranus and then holds this position for weeks because that Mars-Uranus quincunx was exact back in mid-June, and, 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 and it held that position almost exactly all the way through this week. And so 
this Mars anger and and fiery and war um, working out this adjustment and irritation with Uranus, the planet of shock and surprise, this is what astrologically is feeding in to all this this current craziness. So, here's where we go with this. It's now going to be easing up a little bit, but we're far from being through this. We are still in the midst of this. It's intense and it's going to stay intense. Um, the the fear mongering that we see as a result comes from the Saturnian side of of containment, and this is true both personally and globally because astrologically, as above, so below. The inside, the within, is the same as the without, and this is the meaning of astrology: is that when we have these big global events. Um, whether it's policemen being assassinated or whether it's individuals being assassinated um, because ostensibly because of, of race or color or creed, religion, all these reasons of Saturn of, of defining the differences between me and you, when all of this goes on, it's not just going on out there. It's going on in here also. And so that's why we're all a bit frightened. We're a bit fearful, but we don't know what's going to happen. You know, I've been reading or rereading this book, which a lot of people know the psychology of Carl Jung, Jungian psychology. Um, I mean, this is, um, uh, Jung is, is a very well-known uh, 20th century astro um, astrologer. Well, he was that too. Um, psychologist, a contemporary of, um, of Sigmund Freud's, um, and, um, and the last book that Jung wrote, um, this was in 1957, he wrote this little book called The Undiscovered Self, and I'm reading off the back notes, um, um, Jung, the, the, Jung wrote, it is unfortunately only too clear that if the individual is not truly regenerated in spirit, society cannot be either. For society is the sum total of individuals in the need of redemption. Basically, what Jung says is that the the tyranny that's out there, and this was echoed by the other um, another great psychologist who was the handpicked um, successor by Sigmund Freud, but then he was kicked out because his beliefs were too radical. That's a man named Wilhelm Reich. But Reich wrote a book called The Psychology of Mass Fascism. Same kind of idea that what goes on out there is not out there. It's in here. And I want to read one other quote from, from this book and then move on because um, Jung basically says that um, I can therefore see it only as a delusion when the churches try, as they apparently do, to rope the individual into a social organization and reduce him to a condition of diminished responsibility. Instead of raising him out of the torpid, mindless mass and making it clear to him that he or she is the one important factor and, key words, and that the salvation of the world consists of the salvation of the individual soul. So this is the problem that we currently have. We're looking for solutions out there. They ain't going to come from out there. They're going to come from in here. I read recently that compassion is passion with heart. We can't separate our own individual um, stuff from the stuff that's going on out there. And I don't care what political beliefs you have. The magical thing about America is that differences in political spectrum create dialogue. However, whatever political beliefs you have, that does not allow you or me or anyone to take their pent-up anger, their unresolved hurts, their emotional frustrations, and project it out there onto other people who they may not understand. The xenophobia right now 
is crazy. Um, I mean, I watched a bit of the uh, Republican National Convention um, yesterday in the last couple of days, and it really is, it's an incredible how frightened people are, how fearful people are of losing what they think they have to other people. Um, I want to read another little quote here, um, and some of you may have heard this. I've actually said this before um, in some of my YouTube broadcasts, but this is um, comes from the Hopi tradition, and the Hopi are one of the Native American tribes that have had a real focus on this period of time as being a time of change, and this was pr um, um, uh, originated from a Hopi Elders Conference in June of 2000. That's 16 years ago. And it goes like this. And I think this is the prescription for what it is that we do now. And it goes like this. You have been telling people that this is the 11th hour. Now you must go back and tell the people that this is the the hour, and there are things to be considered. Where are you living? What are you doing? What are your relationships? Are you in right relation? Where is your water? Know your garden. It is time to speak your truth. Create your community. Be good to each other. And do not look outside yourself for leaders. Then he clasped his hands together, smiled, and said, This could be a great time. There is a river flowing very fast now. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid. They will try to hold on to the shore. They will feel that they are being torn apart, and they will suffer greatly. No, the river has its destination. The elders say we must let go of the shore and push out into the middle of the river, keep our eyes open and our heads above water. And I say, see who is there with you and celebrate. At this time in history, we are to take nothing personally least of all ourselves. For the moment that we do, our spiritual growth and journey come to a halt. The time of the one wolf, of the lone wolf, is over. Think lone wolf, the person who says, I and only I can fix you. The time for the one wolf, the lone wolf, is over. Gather yourselves Banish the word struggle from your attitude and your vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration. We are the ones we've been waiting for. This is 16 years ago. So, where do we go with this? What do we do with it? Remember, the salvation of the ills out there result from what's going on in here. You want to stop war? Look at your own relationships. Deal with the brush fires around you. Heal the relationships that you have those around you. Because if you heal the relationships in your life around you, and if everyone does that, then there can't be war. War will not end by politicians um, creating treaties. Bucky Fuller's last book, a book called Utopia or Oblivion, talked about how we were getting to a point in history because of communication where everyone knows what's going on, that there'll be greater waves washing one way, then the other, then one way again, and then the other from fear to love, from utopia or from oblivion to utopia. Which way is it going to end? I don't know. And in some way, it doesn't matter. We have to show up as if it's all going to be well. We have to show up 
coming from our hearts. We have to show up with love because love does conquer fear. And although all lives do matter, there are some lives now that seem to be more in jeopardy, and we need to pay attention to that. We need to be aware of the injustices, whether it's racial injustice or whether it's gender injustice, whatever the ju whether it's religious injustice, we can look at any religion and put all the blame there whether it's pre-war Germany, where the Jews were considered to be the holder of all that was evil and all that was hurting society, and now, whether it's, in, whether it's the Muslims that are holding that position for, for, the, for the Christian um, era, if you will, all of this is, is basically aside from the point. We must come from love. And the only way we can do that is by using all the tools we have, whether it's yoga, whether it's meditation, whether it's astrology. Astrology is my love. It's my, it's, it, it is my way of looking at the world. But astrology doesn't give us the answers. It just helps us understand that everything is part of everything. Astrology is not the path. The path is love. Happiness is not somewhere that we're trying to get to. It's how we need to live every moment of our lives. Ram Dass talks about keeping our hearts open in hell. Um, in other words, yes, things are terrible out there. Things are perhaps more frightening, at least they appear that way in this moment with this Mars holding this quincunx to Uranus. Um, and I didn't mention, but there's a planet that's been discovered out past Pluto called Eris, which is larger than Pluto. And Eris right now is lined up with Uranus. And Eris is the planet, it's the goddess of discord and strife and rivalry. And all this energy is coming to the surface. There's no question about it. I'm not Pollyanna. I'm not trying to say everything is fine. Everything is not fine. But on the other hand, we can't go out and fix the universe unless we understand that the universe out there is comprised of all the universes in here, and then we do have a way through that. And that way through that is learning about our own charts, learning about our own relationship with spirit, and learning about what we can do in these times. And in, and, and, um, in conclusion, I want to mention that Tarot.com um, is offering as part of their solution um, a report, a, a tarot reading. Tarot.com has graciously offered a self-healing bottom line reading. And for a limited time, no strings attached. You don't need to buy anything. It's just their way of um, coming through and doing what they can because we all have something we need to do um, um, underneath their, their line of the name of their report, the Self-Healing Bottom Line Tarot Reading, um, underneath this, this free gift, it says, Create the world you want. Peace begins with you.